Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's presentation, we will be talking about Mallory Weiss syndrome. So let's get started. So what is Mallory Weiss syndrome? When vomiting is severe and prolonged, it may result in a longitudinal tear in the innermost layer or the mucosa of the esophagus. The esophagus is the tube that connects the throat to the stomach. Mallory Weiss syndrome is a condition in which there is a tear in the mucosal membrane or the inner lining of the esophagus at the point at which the esophagus meets the stomach and that is called the gastroesophageal junction. So below is an image where you can see the esophagus meets the stomach and this is known as the gastroesophageal junction and the Mallory Weiss tears are specific because they occur at this gastroesophageal junction and they are usually longitudinal tears and they affect only the innermost layer which is the mucosa and this is what it looks like on endoscopy you can see this longitudinal tear in the mucosa so I put this picture in just to give you guys an idea of the esophageal layers and again we said Mallory Weiss only affects the innermost layer or the mucosa of the esophagus so these are all the layers of the esophagus from innermost to outermost so we have the mucosa the submucosa the external muscle layer and the serosa so Mallory Weiss only affects mostly the mucosa and in some very severe cases the submucosa but here it's mostly the mucosa. So what are the causes of Mallory Weiss syndrome? Something to note is that Mallory Weiss syndrome may occur following any event that can provoke a sudden rise in the intragastric pressure and if we have an increase in that gastric pressure it's going to cause a tear at any weak point in the GI tract and that is usually at the gastroesophageal junction and that is why these tears commonly occur there at that point. Some of the situations that can provoke a sudden rise in intragastric pressure include severe vomiting, persistent retching, intense coughing, alcoholic binge drinking, bulimic patients, following a transesophageal echocardiography procedure, trauma to the chest or the abdomen, severe or prolonged hiccups, heavy lifting or straining, gastritis, which is the inflammation of the lining of the stomach, a hiatal hernia, which can cause part of the stomach to push through the diaphragm, and convulsions. So what are the symptoms that patients with Mallory Weiss syndrome experience? Upper abdominal pain, severe vomiting, the vomiting of blood, which is called hematomnesis, and bloody or black stools, which is called melena. The diagnosis. The patient history and presenting symptoms are important. So the first thing that will lead us towards the diagnosis of Mallory Weiss syndrome is the patient presenting in the clinic with those specific symptoms such as uh, hematomnesis or the vomiting of blood, upper abdominal pain, and melena. So those are the presenting symptoms usually. And the patient may also have a history of severe vomiting, retching, history of an eating disorder like bulimia or going on an alcoholic binge drinking spree. So these are all things we need to keep in mind. The upper GI endoscopy is actually the gold standard diagnostic tool for the diagnosing of esophageal tears. And on endoscopy, the visual appearance of one or more linear bleeding lacerations close to the gastroesophageal junction is reported in a Mallory Weiss syndrome. So on the left you see the picture of that longitudinal tear near that gastroesophageal junction and this is found on an endoscopy in a patient with Mallory Weiss syndrome. Continuing with the diagnosis we could also do a CBC or a complete blood count and this can be helpful because it confirms that there has been a long-standing active bleed in the GI tract and the CBC will show a low red blood cell count. So because that patient has been bleeding out from the GI tract for quite a while, the red blood cell count can be low. So what are the treatment options available in Mallory Weiss syndrome? Something to note here is that it has been proven that bleeding that results from tears in the esophagus will stop on its own in about 80 to 90% of cases. So if the bleeding is not severe and it's not a very large laceration, uh, no treatment 
is actually required in those cases because there is an 80 to 90 percent chance that the lesion will actually heal on its own. But if the patient has suffered extensive blood loss, then IV fluids should be administered. We can also do esophageal balloon tamponade, and this is also used only in extreme bleeding cases. Esophageal clips can be applied to the site of an active bleeding. Endoscopic band ligation can also be used in patients with severe bleeding. And medications to reduce stomach acid production, such as proton pump inhibitors or H2 receptor blockers, can also be used. There are also some therapeutic upper endoscopy techniques used to treat Mallory Weiss syndrome and we could do injection therapy or sclerotherapy which delivers medication directly to the tear to close off the blood vessel and stop the bleeding. We could also do coagulation therapy which delivers heat to the torn vessel sealing it off. We could perform an arteriography which can also be used to identify the bleeding vessel and plug it to stop the bleeding. Uh, extensive blood loss may require the use of a transfusion to replace the lost blood and surgical care is only required in special cases in which bleeding cannot be controlled by medication or by therapeutic upper endoscopy intervention. So I put in this image because it shows the difference between Mallory Weiss syndrome versus Boerhaave syndrome and I did do a video on Boerhaave syndrome and I'll put a link for it in the description. They're both very similarly related diseases. And in Mallory Weiss syndrome, again, we have those linear tears at the gastroesophageal junction, and it can extend to the distal esophagus. Our patient will present with hematemnesis or the vomiting of blood. And it's an incomplete tear because it usually only affects the mucosa and the submucosa, which are the innermost layers of the esophagus. And in Boerhaave syndrome, we have a complete rupture so it's a full thickness rupture of the esophagus. We have all four layers of the esophagus which are affected in Boerhaave syndrome. And the patient will present with chest pain and shock, subcutaneous emphysema. And we have Hammond sign, which are crunching sounds upon the auscultation of the heart due to a pneumomediastinum. And that is all part of Boerhaave syndrome. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found the presentation very informative. Please do like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care. Bye for now.